Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. 441, Dallas Cowboys, as well as the rest of the league, have major decisions to make today since today is cut-down day. That's when all NFL teams have to slim their rosters down to 53 players. However, some of those moves have already leaked out. Cowboys have already told Ben DiNucci he's one of those cuts, but the Cowboys have a bigger problem who to start at left tackle instead of Tyron Smith, who was injured in practice after the second preseason game, not expected back until December at the earliest, if at all. Cowboys will be one of the first ones to tell you that's why they drafted Tyler Smith with their first pick. If some reason Smith is not ready for the challenge, Jones says they will use someone in-house to fill the void and not bring in another player. We are now just days away from the kickoff of the UTSA Run Runners football season, a chance to defend their Conference USA championship and their 12-win season. The coveted single digits have been passed out as part of the Triangle of Toughness mantra introduced by head coach Jeff Trailer. And two of the recipients are two senior leaders on the team, quarterback Frank Harris and safety Rashad Wisdom, both San Antonio high school products. It means a lot. Um, just having all my peers, my teammates, my coaching staff all believe in me. Um, it's very, I'm very honored to be, you know, in zero. Uh, and this means a lot to me. It's a big thing, especially for us. Um, you know, it's something that we were really bought into and really, um, you know, really about. And uh, you know, there's there's a lot of guys that got voted into the single digits this year that are new. And I feel as though the right people are in the numbers. So, um, you know, I'm definitely excited for everyone that got, in, got, got voted in because it's a big thing. And, um, you know, we don't take it lightly. Now all that needs to happen is to pack the dome on Saturday for the Roadrunners 230 game against Houston. Warner. Deep drop. Scrambling. Still scrambling. Throws. And that's how the Steel Knights knocked off number one Brennan in the third and final game of the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022. But now as the new number one team in 12's top 12, they have another tough opponent this week. That's right. Uh, that's why they are big game coverage when they host uh, Lake Travis, same team that ended Brennan's season last year in the Region 4 Finals. Cavaliers lost their season opener in a shootout with Arlington Martin. That was broadcast nationally on ESPNU, but did not put in their starting quarterback after Bo Edmondson aggravated a back injury in the calf scrimmage before their season opener. Instead, they had to rely heavily on their run game. No word on if Edmondson will be back for this game either, but the Knights may have found a new starting quarterback at sophomore Cade Warner and Jaden Bailey burned Brennan for three touchdowns and 201 yards as well. You know they're going to be a really good opponent. Uh, in the past few years, you know, we had our ups and downs with them. It's always been a hard-fought game. They're going to be tough. Uh, they're always a great program throughout the years, uh, but we're focused on ourselves, and we know we got to do what we got to do uh, to come out successful. Lake Travis travels to Lenhoff Stadium to face Steele, 7 o'clock Friday night. Good luck to Steele. Time now, 444 and 79 degrees for now. Coming up next, why a judge in the Alex Murdoch murder case is putting strict controls on how defense lawyers can review evidence in the deaths of his wife and son. And welcome back. It is 447. A South Carolina judge in the Alex Murdoch murder case has put strict controls on how defense lawyers can review evidence. ABC's Rihanna Nally has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, chaos in the courtroom. No statutory authority whatsoever. Alex Murdaugh back in court for a heated hearing. His lawyers accusing the state of withholding evidence. The problem is, is that inevitably a number of people, as the case is prepared, have to get access to that information. And the whole point is to have this not fall in the, in the wrong hands. This case is unique. It's unprecedented in South Carolina history. This information literally is probably worth over a a judge deciding the evidence must be shared, but putting strict controls on how, putting a temporary protective order in place. Uh, appreciate the judge's order that this is a temporary protective order um, and that he's going to refine it uh, and make it less obtrusive, less restrictive. And we'll have much more on Alex Murdaugh's next legal steps coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York.
Let's look outside the trans guy looking at Highway 90 at Couples. Things are moving there and we hadn't seen too many problems on the road yet, but we'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Mike joins us now. Mike, is one of your concerns today that where these storms pop up, they won't be moving very quickly at all? That's the situation right mm -hmm. now in, uh, was the situation in Val Verde County, now Bandera County, because mm -hmm. I've had a lot of very heavy rain. A lot of rain is gonna be falling, and yeah, I mean, these things won't move very quickly, so you are gonna be seeing some of the, uh, the very heavy downpours. So take a look at radar as of right now, and boy, you can see those just real hefty downpours right there, western Bandera County, and it is coming down just in buckets. And then that line back further off to the uh, the west, more of these showers and a couple of storms are popping up there in portions of uh, Uvalde County on top of that. So let's take a look real quickly here at what's going on there in uh, Bandera County. And you can see the hefty downpours that are falling all uh, kind of almost covering the entire western half of the county right there and as far as rainfall rates and this is what we're going to be uh, looking at in a lot of spots and look at those uh, kind of purple and um, light purple areas right there that's where we're seeing some of the heaviest downpours and this is coming down at the rate of about four inches per hour and so it doesn't mean you'll necessarily get that much but already just in say half an hour 45 minutes picked up one two or almost three inches of rain in parts of Bandera County because of those very, very hefty uh, rainfall rates. And then as far as what has estimated already fallen just in the past uh, couple of hours around here, uh, you can see some of these spots right there in central Bandera County. Radar estimates about two and a half, close to three inches worth of rain. Further back off to the west, just uh, right there, kind of in western or eastern Edwards County, about two inches worth of rain. So that's what we're going to be looking at throughout the rest of today is all of the very hefty downpours around here. And uh, this line is still continuing to develop out there to the west. And that will notice how the line itself is sort of moving down to the southeast, but individual cells want to kind of move up to the the north a little bit and this is continuing to build as well so folks in eastern Edwards County may want to watch out for some of that uh, very heavy rain and then further on down to the south we've got some of these spots right here uh, just to the west of Sabinal a couple of showers around Uvalde in western Uvalde County and these are continuing to uh, kind of pop up as the morning rolls on nothing in town as of right now there's the flood advisory for western Bandera County up until 630 for Valverde County up until six o'clock this morning wouldn't be surprised if a lot more of these advisories are going to continue to pop up throughout the uh, the morning as well as the afternoon. Temperatures will stay in the upper 70s this morning and we'll make it through the 80s and still 30 close to 40% chance of rain, especially in the hill country. And then that's going to continue to go up in through the afternoon. 40 50% chance of rain, only 90 for a high temperature today. And computer models doing a pretty good job with some of these showers and thunderstorms. What you can really take away from this is later on this afternoon, a lot more of that is going to be popping up. And through tomorrow, we're looking at, well, at least two, three, four inches of rain. The biggest threat's going to be in portions of the hill country here in town. Yes, we will see you know, inch, couple of inches of rain, but the biggest threat in the next couple of days will be out to the west. 84 at noon, a couple of scattered showers and thunderstorms around here, and then 90 high temperature today. More scattered showers and thunderstorms. Heavy downpours can be expected. That's going to be the situation tomorrow as well as Thursday. And then we'll still have rain. Now, again, not raining constantly, not everywhere, but decent rain chances even through the weekend and going into Labor Day. So if you have outdoor plans, you just want to kind of kind of watch what's going on as far as the weekend is concerned. But for the next couple of days, keep your umbrella and keep your rain jacket handy. We're getting some rain and maybe too much. We'll be prepared. Thank you, Mike. 452, about 79 degrees. And details of the new version of Michael Jackson's best-selling album of all time, now available for pre-sale. 455, Madonna is back on the Billboard charts, plus how you can see and celebrate the 40th anniversary version of Thriller. Thriller is what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson.
Madonna, still setting chart records. Her new album, Finally Enough Love, a dance remix compilation of her hits, debuts at number 8 on the Billboard 200 album chart, making her the first female artist to hit the top 10 on that chart in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 10s, and now the 20s. The nine other acts who've managed to do that are all either male solo stars or groups with an all-male lineup, including Prince, Bruce Springsteen, Paul McCartney, and Metallica. It's Madonna's 23rd top 10 album overall. Speaking of Madonna, we're seeing Evan Rachel Wood for the first time as the iconic singer in the trailer for Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Daniel Radcliffe stars as the legendary song parody polka artist. The film starts streaming November 4th on the Roku channel. You can now lock in your 40th anniversary version of Thriller, an expanded version of the best-selling album of all time, now available for pre-sale. It's a double CD set of Michael Jackson's iconic album with a bonus record filled with rare audio recordings and demos. It'll be out November 18th. Anyone who has come this far, who has made the choice to come to therapy and keep hammering away at the hard things, they can be helped. Out today, Steve Carell stars in The Patient, playing a psychotherapist being held captive by a serial killer demanding to be cured. Two episodes of the FX drama out now on Hulu. And a milestone birthday for Cameron Diaz. The actress and producer is 50 today, while Grammy-nominated singer B.B. Rexa is 33. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Three minutes till five, 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, details on an open forum meeting in Uvalde last night regarding safety and security changes ahead of school starting next week. Plus, Snapchat is adding a new feature to its popular app. Details ahead in your morning tech bites. Let's take a quick look at the roads with TransSky looking there at Highway 281 and Loop 410. Things look okay right there and also at Highway 281 in St. Mary's. We're going to be checking in with Stephen very soon. He just walked in the studio. We'll be right back. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, families and community leaders over in Uvalde discuss safety and security ahead of the public school year starting next Tuesday. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. As Ukraine mounts a counteroffensive to retake Russian-held territory, concern is growing about the potential for disaster as troops fight in the footprint of Europe's largest nuclear power plant. That story coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 79 degrees. We are expecting rain, and actually there's rain already in our area. And good morning to you. It's Tuesday, August 30th, and we'll tell you right off the bat here, umbrella alert. Yes, definitely be prepared today because it's going to happen most likely. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Yeah, and we're getting a ton of rain right now in parts of the hill country. Do have that flood advisory in Bandera County, still western Bandera County, and then also in Valverde County. Going to show you that in just a moment. First of all, temperature stands at 79 degrees, so we are a good five above normal right now. And then check out the bottom number again. I mean, that humidity pushes back. That dew points at 75, and it's that what that's doing is setting up the fact that we're going to have some heavy downpours as we're already having like the sponge that's kind of you know all full of water getting squeezed out best way to describe it 90 for a high temperature today so it is definitely going to be staying down in some areas probably will not even hit 90 degrees because of the cloud cover because of the rain the aquifer yesterday dropped down uh, eight tenths of a foot and uh, should go up because we've got a lot of rain that is falling in portions of the hill country mold and fall elm are both on the high side pigweed is low so take a look at radar right now and the focus starting off is right there in Bandera County the western portion of Bandera County one thing to take note of notice how those uh, cells were sort of moving up up to the north somewhat and now they are almost starting to kind of build back in there a little bit more and that's not necessarily a good thing just because of the fact that they're kind of dumping rain on top of where there's already been a whole bunch of rain around there. So again, let's take a look at some of the uh, the rainfall estimates right now, and it just continues to uh, to get added to there in Bandera County. And you can see that one spot right there, and that's what's prompting the uh, flood advisory until 630 for portions of Bandera County. Uh, two, two and a half, uh, close to three inches of rain in parts of the county, about an inch right there. And again, this is just continuing to get added to as the, the morning rolls on. 
And then further out to the northwest, we've got this line of showers and uh, thunderstorms that will also continue to work its way basically down to the southeast and more of these spots that continue to pop up there in portions of the hill country. Also, you got to watch it in eastern Edwards County and portions of Real County for some of these uh, heavier downpours. There's nothing in and around the metropolitan area as of right now, but we are looking at more rain to continue to develop throughout the morning and late afternoon or into the afternoon, it should say 79 in town, 81 in uh, Casterville, pardon me, and uh, New Braunfels at 77 degrees. Showers, thunderstorms, mainly to the northwest this morning, and then we'll have more scattered showers and storms. Some heavy downpours can be expected today, so we'll have to watch out for that, and that's going to be the situation tomorrow as well as Thursday. Then we go into the Labor Day weekend. We'll still have some rain around the area. Decent chance of rain. I don't think it's going to be a, any sort of a washout, though, and temperatures, though, will continue to stay in the low 90s through the Labor Day weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, good morning, sir. Some dry roads for right yep. now. Any yep. big problems? No, thankfully, Mike, right now, not a lot to show our commuters right now. The 410 at Ray Ellison, let's get a look and see what they can expect for this early, early morning drive. There is 410 at Ray Ellison. Now, as Mike mentioned, roads still dry here in town, so just take it easy as always. Give yourself time. No need to rush out the door, but 281 at St. Mary's looks like we have a few more folks out there. Definitely there at US 90 at Couples, one of our usual busy spots. But uh, as we take you to the map, again, not a lot to show you, and that's great because if you do have to travel into San Antonio, Nothing major is going to slow you down at this point. We take you to those travel times because it's a 28 minute drive time. If you're heading in from 37 northbound, traveling up from Pleasanton, about half an hour on Highway 90 eastbound, traveling in from Castroville, and that arrival from Lytle, about a 17 minute drive time on I 35 northbound. So things are looking pretty green so far. 35 there at Maine. You can see just the commute is picking up just a tad bit over there, but other places there, 35 north of Loop 410, still relatively quiet, but of course, we're we're going to bring you some information on construction spots and road closures that will be coming up a little bit later on. Guys, Stephen, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to find a suspect who shot someone during a drive by shooting on the city's west side overnight. It happened in the 2200 block of San Luis near West Commerce around 11 o'clock last night. SAPD says the man was walking to his house when someone at a dark colored sedan pulled up and started shooting at him. The man was hit in the arm and taken to a hospital. The suspect got away and this morning is still on the run. Well, it was a long night in Uvalde last night. The school board hosted a public hearing on the budget and tax rate and had two special meetings. One of those was an open forum for families to discuss safety and security ahead of school starting next week. As Lee Wallen reports, the forum lasted over an hour and a half. These open forum meetings have traditionally lasted a long time, but with the start of school just a week away, there was a renewed sense of urgency when it came to calls for safety and security changes. Ensuring campus personnel are aware of alternative methods of warning campus personnel of an active threat, including the use of intercom system. Real changes that could have potentially saved lives. This measure could have, been, could have saved <clears throat> Irma Garcia, Eva Mireles, Amy Jo Garza and Aletia Ramirez. That's what families of victims and community members are asking for as the start of school is around the corner. And with glass, I mean, were, were they going to, are they going to put some type of ballistic uh, film on, on all glass? Or is that true or not? That is one of the things we've, we're investigating and looking at. Dr. Hal Harrell going over the trainings that have taken place to get teachers and staff ready for the emotional needs of students this year. Also pointing out the physical changes to schools won't be ready in time. This work is running behind schedule. The uh, manufacturing of the doors and the frames is been back ordered. Calls were made again for every officer with UCISD police to be placed on leave for their roles on May 24th. The district reiterating an independent audit and evaluation is being conducted before an investigation is started. This not good enough for Monday night's attendees. Why not conduct an investigation as soon as possible so you can relieve some of these officers of their duty or faculty or other people that need to be removed from their duties that failed that day? I mean, don't you think that that would be important? Dr. Harrell mentioned that he'll be meeting with a DPS captain and lieutenant on Wednesday at 1030 a.m. to talk about what those 33 troopers will be doing on UCISD campuses come the start of school. We also learned that there will be trainings happening this coming Sunday and Monday to make sure that everyone is prepared and knows their roles for the start of school next Tuesday.
and Uvalde. Lee Waldman for GMSA. And she is accused of tampering with payment logs, specifically the ones at Rodriguez Park. Ex-Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela was back in court for week two of her trial. The judge is hoping to have this trial wrapped up later this week. Now, yesterday, her former deputy took the stand. Deputy Calvin O'Neill says he worked more than a handful of times. He says he repeatedly worked security at Rodriguez Park in 2018 while still a reserve. That is important because that would be a violation of the Texas Occupations Code, which restricts the types of peace officers that can work these jobs. On top of that, O'Neill testified the then constable didn't pay him. If convicted, Barrientes Vela faces up to 10 years in prison. San Antonio police and crime stoppers are trying to find a suspect responsible for stabbing two people on the Riverwalk. Happened July 23rd, just after 5 in the morning in the 200 block of Riverwalk. SAPD says one of the victims had gotten into a fight with the suspect in the 200 block of East Houston. After the fight, the victim and another person tried to walk away, but police say the suspect followed them and started another fight, and that's when the two victims were stabbed. If you have any info, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get a reward for the information that you provide. And time now, 509 and 79 degrees for now. Still ahead, a first look at Snapchat's brand new dual camera feature. And taking a look outside with live cam. No rain in this shot yet, but be prepared for that. It will start raining later today, and we are getting rain in other parts of our area. We'll be right back. Just about 13 minutes past the hour. Turning now to the war in Ukraine. Ukrainian forces are mounting a counteroffensive to win back Russian-occupied regions. ABC's Justin Finch is following the story from Washington. New Maxar satellite images showing a bird's eye view of some of the damage at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Now under Russian control, the site has been a flashpoint of fighting between Ukrainian and Russian forces, both blaming each other. The Pentagon asserting most of the shelling is coming from Russians. Watching from Washington, the White House is calling for a preemptive powering down of the site's nuclear reactors and for demilitarizing the area, calling that the safest and less risky option. That call coming as inspectors from the International Atomic Energy Agency prepare to assess the situation at Zaporizhia, Europe's largest nuclear power plant. A Ukrainian doctor telling ABC's Brit Clinic fears of another nuclear disaster are growing. We worked with some people who were exposed after the Chernobyl. They still have tremendous uh, health problems. It's of course frightening. Ukraine's President Zelensky announcing a Russian counteroffensive in the south, saying Ukraine is returning its own, listing regions by name, Kharkiv, Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Kherson, and Crimea. And to the Russians, this, the occupiers should know we will oust them to the border. Pentagon officials say Putin's effort is unlikely to succeed, noting Russia has lost between 60 and 80,000 soldiers in its war against Ukraine. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 514, 79 degrees. And still ahead, how some T-Mobile customers will now get free access to a major streaming service. It takes energy to take on the world. So whether you're breaking a sweat, breaking down barriers, or breaking the laws of gravity, keep moving with the ultimate energy bar. We bake in delicious, wholesome ingredients, purposefully crafted with a blend of protein, fat, and carbs. Because the more good you put in, the more great you get out. Cliff, baked in goodness. Now introducing Cliff Thins, a crispy, craveable 100-calorie snack. Oh, allergy sufferers. Bedtime means it's time to take Zizol. Zizol relieves allergies while you sleep, so you wake refreshed. Plus, it works faster than Claritin and on first dose, provides the same relief as Zyrtec in a pill nearly half the size. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Morning, noon, night. Indulgent, delicious, irresistible. Fancy Feast makes delighting your cat delightfully easy. Every recipe, every last detail. Another fancy way to show your love. Fancy Feast. Give your cat the world with globally inspired medleys. 
In today's Tech Bytes, Snapchat just rolled out a dual camera recording feature. You can now use the app to capture photo and video using your phone's front-facing and rear-facing cameras at the same time. It's currently available on iOS for newer iPhone models. T-Mobile is offering a new perk to some customers, one year of free Apple TV+. Plus. The offer rolls out tomorrow for all new and existing T-Mobile Magenta Max users. Customers on T-Mobile's Magenta Unlimited plan are also eligible for six months of free Apple+. Plus. And it's now easier to add emojis to documents in Google Docs. A new feature allows users to search for them directly when typing. Just use the at sign immediately followed by the emoji you want. Now, I remember when you could only change the text style. Those were such font memories. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Uh, we're coming straight to me, so I don't know what to say to that. Poll in the studio really quick. Is that a thumbs up? <laughs> Yeah. I'm not sure. It's awfully early. Well, the emoji we would use would be a question mark. Is that it? Well, That's actually, the actual, actual question, question mark. mark. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, let's get a look at the roadways right now. The commute's not looking bad at all. Uh, dry roads here in town, at least. 281 there at St. Mary's. Just a few folks out there this early in the morning. But although the roads have been quiet, we know other areas like this, US 90, we show it to you every day. Well, commute's a lot busier out there. A lot of folks making their way into the Alamo City from Castorville. So just keep that in mind. Give yourself some time before you head out the door and remember to be kind out on the roadways. Taking you right to the map, just more green that we're showing you. So still the same situation that we showed you a little bit earlier in the morning. However, keep in mind some road work will take place here off Loop 410 over on the south side of San Antonio. This is utility work actually begins today, Tuesday, August 30th and will wrap on Thursday, September 1st according to TxDOT. This will begin at 9 in the morning and should wrap at 3 in the afternoon. It's during that time, a single mainland closure in both directions from Old Pearsall Road to I-37. So drivers, go ahead and grab your phones if you're still at home and open your camera app and scan that QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that has a list of all the closures that are happening in and around the Alamo City throughout the month of August and into the early days of September, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. All right, here's a look at uh, live cam over there by the, the medical center, and this is 10 heading out of town. The roads are dry for the time being, but boy, we've got a lot of rain out in parts of the hill country. And notice again, right here in Bandera County, where these cells sort of move up to the north, almost kind of fizzle on out and more developing right on the heels of that and that's what's prompting the flood advisory for western uh, bandera county up until 6 30 this morning and again i wouldn't be surprised if more uh, advisories are posted in portions of the hill country throughout the morning there are more uh, cells that are continuing to develop in portions of uvalde county and again these are some decent downpours we're seeing rainfall rates about two three uh, even in bandera county four inches per hour and over about the past hour and a half in parts of bandera county i've already picked up uh, close to three inches of rain and even more in some spots and further up to the northwest we're looking at this line of showers and even a couple of thunderstorms, not a whole lot in the way of lightning strikes being detected there, but we will continue to see more. And this extends from western uh, Gillespie County all the way back down toward Del Rio, just to the north of Del Rio. And just north of Del Rio, there's also a spot where we've had about uh, anywhere from one to three inches of rain, and that's also a flood advisory up until six o'clock this morning. A little bit closer in toward the, uh, the metropolitan area, we're not seeing any rain as of yet. Yet, uh, maybe, uh, let's see, a couple little sprinkles. Yeah, one or two of them did, did try to pop up, and we may have a couple of them down here along the coast. But the best area to see rain today is going to be further out in portions of the hill country. And as far as uh, rainfall amounts, we're going to see widespread two, three, four inches, and then heavier amounts, obviously, on top of that. Kind of bumped up the numbers just to take into account the showers and some of the storms in parts of the hill country this morning. We'll make it up through the 80s, 84 at noon, obviously temperatures are going to be held down thanks to the cloud cover and thanks to the uh, the rain out there and we're going to make it up to 90 later on today good 50 percent chance for showers and a few thunderstorms again the majority today are going to be further to the west but then we will continue to see more sort of uh, around the area over the next couple of days here's the rapid update computer model and it's doing a, an okay job initializing with some of this rain but what we can take away from this is the fact that we're going to see 
More of these showers and thunderstorms developing later on this afternoon and going through the early evening hours. Then they'll start to die down somewhat. Then they're going to start to pick back up again tomorrow. So we'll probably, especially in portions of the hill country, have more of a, uh, a wet commute in the morning hours. And then throughout the afternoon, we'll start to see the uh, scattered showers and a few storms out there. And again, Take the area, sort of cut it in half. The majority of the rain, the heaviest is going to be out to the west. And this is just sort of the, the broad brush approach to this, but there will be those heavier downpours in spots. Case in point this morning in western Bandera County. 84 degrees, scattered uh, showers and thunderstorms around the area, primarily north and west, and then more later on today. So best advice, uh, just keep your umbrella and rain jacket handy. Maybe one of those raincoats that you know you can stuff in a backpack for the kids. And then tomorrow, as well as Thursday, these three days are the better chances for some rain. It's right now, temperatures stay right around low 90s. A slightly lesser chance for some scattered rain. And again, not everywhere. Not everyone sees rain all the time, but pretty good rain chances all the way even through Monday. Be extra careful in school zones as visibility drops during some of these storms today. You're going to want to slow down even more and can't believe I'm saying this, but some of the ground is already saturated oh, wow. in parts of the hill. Country. So that's, you know, over the past few days, that's why we're seeing some of these uh, minor flooding issues there with this heavy rain. A lot to watch out for right yep. now. All right. Thanks, Mike. 524 79 degrees and up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at the first full trailer for weird. The Al Yankovic story starring Daniel Radcliffe. 527, Madonna's had her share of high profile romances, but an accordion player? Hmm. CNN's David Daniel explains in today's Hollywood Minute. I was wondering if you were going to do a parody of my song, Like a Virgin. I'm curious, is that song autobiographical? Yes. <laughs> Except for the fact that I've had a lot of sex. The first full trailer for Weird, the Al Yankovic story, features Evan Rachel Wood as Madonna, Rain Wilson as Dr. Demento, and Daniel Radcliffe as Weird Al, in a parody of both Yankovic's real life and music biopics. The film debuts on the Roku channel November 4th. That's a big challenge. Tessa Thompson is set to star in the sci-fi thriller Ash as a woman who wakes up on a far off planet to find the rest of her space station crew has been killed. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is signed on to play the man sent to rescue her. As they investigate what happened, each must decide how much to trust the other. Grammy-winning soprano Renee Fleming is bringing opera and the City of Light to IMAX. The musical documentary Renee Fleming's Cities That Sing, Paris, puts the city's culture, art, food, and music on North America's biggest screens. An IMAX live event September 18th includes a conversation between Fleming and Kelsey Grammer, with the film also showing September 21st. Tickets are on sale now. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now, 528 and 79 degrees for now. With recent news about student loan forgiveness, scammers are now out in full force. What you need to know to avoid becoming a victim. And ahead on GMSA at 6, should recess be mandatory? Well, we're going to show you how it could play an important role in your child's life. A man who told police he was headed home ends up making a detour to a hospital after someone shot him. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And there are heavy showers in parts of the hill country right now, but here closer to downtown, pretty quiet, 79 degrees. Quiet so far. Good morning, everybody. Tuesday, August 30th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah, a little bit of quiet before the storm. We are expecting rain in some areas today. Mike, where's the biggest emphasis going to be is on storms? Right now, Bandera County. That's uh, in the uh, the short term. As a matter of fact, uh, Weather Service has said they're looking at even issuing a flash flood warning for parts of western Bandera County. New flood advisory issued for western Real, eastern Edwards County up until 715. By the way, this flood advisory for Bandera until 630 and for uh, Valverde County up until 6 o'clock this morning. Morning. And the thing about to take note of and been pointing this out is right there. These storms have just been coming one right on top of the other. That training effect. It looks like it would move up into Kerr County sort of fizzle out. I mean, some rain up there, but this thing is just 
not moving and that's the big problem. We're seeing these heavy downpours, very, very strong, uh, very heavy rainfall rates and then it continues just again one on top of the other moving where it has already rained very heavy. So here's the uh, the radar estimate as of right now and these uh, these couple of spots right here in uh, Bandera County as far as right there about uh, anywhere. Well, that says two and a half inches of rain and then that spot right there two and a half and and uh, about four inches is being detected in some of those spots. So as you can see, that's what uh, the weather service was saying is prompting or may prompt that flash flood warning for those parts of uh, Bandera County. And that will continue throughout most of the morning. And then further off to the west, we've got this line of showers and some heavy thunderstorms. So there's where the uh, flood advisory is for Edwards as well as parts of Real County. And these cells continue to develop down here to the southwest and it's almost like again that they're just kind of running one right on top of the other this line right down there right at the four corners area in the southwest corner of Uvalde County going to have to watch out for that as well nothing a little further to the east in the metropolitan area but again it's out there in uh, Bandera County where the biggest concern is as of right now uh, throughout the rest of the day first of all mold fall elm are both on the high side low amount of pigweed and we're going to make it up to 90 later on. More scattered showers and thunderstorms. Obviously, the, the focus this morning and really throughout the day is going to be in parts of the hill country. We will have some here in and around town, but just watch out for that flooding threat. And that's going to be the problem really not only today, but the next couple of days just because of the, the heavy downpours that we can expect around here. Closer look at the Labor Day weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Hey, Mike. Well, again, the roads not dry, are pretty dry here in town. We're not seeing anything that's causing a delay for those early morning commuters. Let's get a quick look here and see what you can expect. If you're going to be traveling through the metro area, 37 at Hackberry, there's really not a lot to show you, so that's good. But we are going to keep our close eye on things as the morning does tend to pick up. But you can see there, 37 at Houston. Traffic hasn't really picked up in the last few minutes or so. It's relatively stayed the same, but as we inch closer to that busy hour, uh, we know we'll see more folks out there on the roadway. But taking you to the map, just a lot of green to show you there on the screen. Uh, of course, we have those active construction spots and road closures that you want to be on the lookout for. And uh, I guess, again, as I mentioned, roads are dry here in town, so just no need to rush out the door. Give yourself some time and, and just make sure you enjoy the drive to work and drive safely. But taking you to the travel times here, no reason to rush. As I mentioned, 29 minutes Still pretty green in the westbound lanes coming in from Seguin and the, uh, from I-10. 33 minutes on 87 northbound traveling in from Lavernia and a 27 minute drive time for our friends down in Flotusville. So again, things are in the green so far for tenant Starcrest. It does look like it's picking up just a bit out there, but we're going to watch the roads closely. Give you those updates right here on GMSA. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, it's not the kind of welcome a West Side man was expecting from his new neighborhood. San Antonio police say someone shot him as he headed home. It happened late last night on San Luis Street, not far from Zara Zamora. Katrina Weber has a live report from downtown. And Katrina, how serious was his wound? Well, police described it as a gunshot wound to his arm, but chances are he is scarred in more ways than one. He told police he had just moved to that area. He says he was walking in the 2200 block of San Luis, headed to his new home after 11 last night when someone in a car took aim at him. That man who's in his 40s was shot in the arm. Again, he was taken to a hospital by ambulance. The police are still trying to find the shooter who was said to be in a dark colored sedan with someone else. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Gun violence and public safety are in the limelight today. The White House says the president will address those issues while visiting Pennsylvania. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, the trip comes during a week of high-profile crime news. The answer isn't to defund the police, it's to fund the police. The White House says President Joe Biden will push his Safer America plan, including an assault weapon ban, while in Pennsylvania today. More cops for effective, accountable community policing. Biden's trip follows a string of high-profile crime news this week. Atlanta officials say 26 alleged gang members have been arrested and charged with crimes targeting wealthy people, including Calvin Ridley of our Falcons, Brad Guzan of the Atlanta United team, Marlo Hampton, who is on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and Brittany Mealy, who is the mother of Future's child. 
The 220 count indictment covers 16 incidents since 2018. We have a uh, kidnapping. We have armed robberies, we have shootings, and we have home invasions. New York police say they're charging a juvenile with spraying two Jewish men with fire extinguishers. And in Central Oregon, Mr. Surratt acted heroically during this terrible incident. A grocery store employee is being credited with saving lives. He died trying to disarm a shooter who also killed a customer. No, we need to guard against the cynicism of thinking of these attacks as regular, unavoidable things. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. It could be a crucial week for Netflix. The streaming giant will report its second quarter earnings later today. Netflix has been struggling this year, including losing tons of subscribers. The company's stock currently down about 70% so far this year. That wiped out billions of dollars in market value, and the company has laid off hundreds of employees. However, the platform still has more than 221 million subscribers worldwide. It's also hoping it can get a boost through advertising. The company announced last week it will partner with Microsoft on a new, cheaper, ad-supported subscription plan. Your cell phone carrier might know more about your daily life than you realize. According to carrier letters made public by the Federal Communications Commission, the country's largest wireless carriers know where you are every time you make a phone call or use your data connection. And they routinely hold on to that location information for months. In some cases, they provide it to law enforcement, whether you like it or not. Officials have called on the FCC's Enforcement Bureau to investigate whether wireless carriers are doing enough to tell customers how their information is handled. Elon Musk's legal team has subpoenaed Twitter's former head of security to appear for dep a deposition. Comes days after that, Twitter whistleblower said the company has serious vulnerabilities that could put users, even national security, at risk. The whistleblower also said Twitter does not have an accurate count of how many spam and fake bot accounts exist on its platform. A key reason for Musk cited for backing out of his $44 billion bid to buy the company was that it has more of these fake accounts than it discloses. He's currently fighting legal action from Twitter to force him to carry out the deal. The case is set to go to trial coming up in October. A hey, quick weather alert. Mike wants us to pass along. The National Weather Service is about to issue a flash flood warning for Western Bandera County. Be advised. All right, it's just been issued and it's in effect through 830 this morning. Thank you, Mike. And for now, 540 and 79 degrees in this area. Are you ready for fall yet? Starbucks is. We're going to tell you when you can get your pumpkin spice latte. And up next, the FTC is issuing a warning about scammers using the recent news about student loan forgiveness as bait. And like Mark said, flash flood warning for Western Bandera County. Here with live cam closer to downtown, 79 degrees. We'll be right back. 543, the Federal Trade Commission is issuing a warning about scammers possibly using the recent news about student loan forgiveness as bait. As CNN's Cole Higgins reports, the Better Business Bureau has some important ways to protect yourself. Unsolicited calls, texts, emails, and fraudulent websites. It's how scammers will likely use the latest news about student loan forgiveness to bait new victims. Scammers will promise fast forgiveness, whether it is additional benefits, faster benefits, erasing your student debt. All of those are empty promises that will lead to an empty pocketbook. The Better Business Bureau is bracing for a spike in calls and reports after the Federal Trade Commission issued a consumer alert about potential scams involving student loans. Last Wednesday, President Joe Biden announced a plan to address student loan debt, including debt forgiveness for certain borrowers. The BBB says scammers may use the news to attempt to defraud borrowers looking for eligibility information. It's important to know that the government is not allowed to call you about your student loan unless you've given permission. The Better Business Bureau has these tips to protect yourself. First, understand that these government programs are free to sign up for and that anyone offering you help for a fee is a red flag. Number two, know the ins and outs of your student loan. Know the terms and don't fall for it if a scammer promises you benefits the government or your loan provider hasn't already offered you. Number three, do your research. Look up the lender or company reaching out to you to find out if there's a scam artist on the other end of the line. Number four, look twice before you click. The BBB says some imposters often create lookalike government websites, so pay attention to the URL. 
And finally, protect your private data. Don't give out your social security number, federal student aid ID, or any other personal information. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. 545, 79 degrees. And coming up next, Pumpkin Spice Latte is back at Starbucks, but you're going to have to pay a little more this year to get one. And welcome back. It's 547. Your morning consumer headlines. Honda and LG have announced a $4 billion deal to build a battery factory for electric vehicles. The automaker and Korean battery giant said in a joint news release the planned factory will be located somewhere in the U.S. The company's plan to begin construction early next year and to prepare for mass production by the end of 2025. LG is a longtime partner of General Motors and has also supplied the battery for the Chevrolet Bolt. Honda does not currently offer an electric vehicle in the U.S., but plans to launch an SUV in 2024. Your favorite fall beverage returns to Starbucks this week. The pumpkin spice latte will be available starting today. Just get ready to pay a little bit more for it. Depending on location, the grande sized hot PSL will cost customers between $5 and 45 cents to 595. That's about a 4% increase compared to last year. Also returning pumpkin cream cold brew, apple crisp macchiato, an apple crisp oat milk macchiato. Oat milk. I almost said oatmeal. It's yeah. morning though, so oh, yeah. oh, I yeah. could be forgiven, right? It's, it's appropriate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> A lot of options there. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Oat milk, oatmeal, both good. Yes. <laughs> All sure. right. You know, traffic's been looking pretty good so far here in town. I attended Hackberry. We really haven't had a lot to show you and talk about this morning, so that's good news for you and makes my job a little bit easier. But as we take a look around town, you can see now seeing a few more folks out there this early in the morning. The commute is picking up as we inch closer to 6 a.m. 35 at Evans, one of the busier corridors there, just seeing a few more folks. So plan your commute ahead of time. The roads are still dry here in town, and we're going to watch them closely. Another thing we continue to watch are those gas prices. If you plan on fueling up in any of these counties. Let's take a look at what AAA is reporting as of today because the average gas price here in Bear County 325 Kendall County. We're looking at $3 and 37 cents and for our neighbors over in Guadalupe County $3 and 28 cents. So if you're not going to go grab a pumpkin spice latte can fuel up right there. These are today's gas prices from AAA, but of course we're going to keep a close eye on things there and uh, as well as the traffic that is picking up already at US 90 at couples. Looks like the commute is already getting a little busier, Mike. At least the uh, roads here in town are dry, but we do have flash flood warning. A new one for Bandera County, Western Bandera County, up until 830 this morning. And this is uh, the outline for it there. Again, 830 flash flood warning. This was uh, issued on top of the fact, or I should say because of the fact that we do have um, about uh, three, four, five inches worth of rain that has fallen in parts of uh, western Bandera County. Let's take a look at some of the uh, the rainfall estimates here from radar or on radar, I should say. And uh, some of them have again have been anywhere and even ground measurements have been about four and a half to close to five inches of rain in portions of western Bandera County. And right here, as you can see, this red area, there's some of the radar estimates for uh, four almost five inches worth right there or a little bit uh, less than that. So that's what we are dealing with in again parts of Bandera County. As far as the uh, heavy, heavy rain, this is going to continue throughout the rest of the morning. And then also what we have to watch out for is out to the west in Real County with this very, very heavy rain. As you can see these pockets and we'll put this back into motion and they're just kind of one on top of the other. And this is what's prompting flood advisory for right Right there along uh, Eastern Edwards and Western of uh, Real counties. That's up until uh, seven, excuse me, um, 615, 630 this morning. Pardon me, 715. That advisory was up until 630. A new flood advisory has been posted for Del Rio, and that's up until 830 this morning. Also, another spot that we have to watch is right here at the Four Corners area, the corner of Uvalde and Kinney. Uh, Zavala as well as Webb counties. This line right here. Notice how again this is sort of training right there. So that's what we're going to have to be on the lookout for there. Here in town, we're not seeing anything as far as any rain as of right now. However, 
that can change later on today. So that's what we're going to have to watch out for. There is the flood advisory Edwards and Real counties wouldn't be surprised even if that gets upgraded. And like I said, there is the new flood advisory right there around Del Rio up until 830. That's the older advisory for parts of Val Verde County. That's in effect up until six o'clock this morning. So here in town, um, the 40% chance of rain right now is taking into account what's going on in the hill country. We're going to be in the upper 70s. We are in the upper 70s right now. We're going to hold steady. Obviously, you get a heavy rain shower around where you are. That's going to cool things down. The rain cool the air. Uh, but here in town, we're not looking at any rain in the next couple of hours. And then going in through noon, 84 degrees. Rain chances will definitely continue to go up. Again, the majority of this is going to be in portions of the hill country. 90 for a high temperature later on today. Computer models got the heavy rain in parts of the hill country. May see a lull in the action somewhat by late morning. But then again, it picks back up in the afternoon. And we're going to have, won't be raining everywhere, but we are going to have those scattered, potentially heavy downpours around the area throughout the rest of the afternoon going in toward dinner time, and then that will repeat again tomorrow as well as on Thursday. Today, tomorrow, Thursday are the, the days with the best chance for some rain in the forecast. 84 at noon, scattered showers and thunderstorms, and then a high temperature today makes it up to 90, so we will be 4 degrees below normal. Heavy downpour is what we have to watch out for, and after such a dry summer, believe it or not, in some parts of the hill country especially, the ground is saturated, and that's why we're having a flooding threat. On the plus side, though, a lot of this is going to be falling in parts of the recharge zone, so that's going to benefit. 90s, right around 90, all the way through the weekend. Better rain chances through Thursday. Still scattered showers and thunderstorms over the long Labor Day weekend. A lot more after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are following the latest on the water emergency in Jackson, Mississippi. And no, this is not a repeat. Their system is on the brink of collapsing. This crisis triggered by the flooding. So I'm going to be tracking that. Trevor Alt is down there for us. And then we'll talk about the storms on the move with more than 240 damaging storm reports. They turned deadly and now headed for the Northeast. Also ahead, the Duke volleyball player who says she and some of her teammates were targeted with racial slurs during a match against BYU. We have an interview with her this morning as her family is calling for accountability. Those stories and so much more on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA and Austin area teen waking up behind bars this morning after posing for a picture with a gun in front of a high school campus. We'll tell you more about it. And just ahead, early details in an overnight shooting on the city's west side that sent one person to the hospital. The shooter is still on the run. Big storms to our west this morning. Mike is tracking those. Right now, the roads are still dry at 410 and Broadway and most of the uh, freeways around town here in San Antonio. But that could change later on. A full update with Stephen and Mike coming up. This morning, San Antonio police are looking for the person who shot a man on the city's west side overnight. We're going to tell you what we know so far. Do you remember the future? We're finally getting a look at DeLorean's new, brand new model. And there is a flash flood warning effect for Western Bear County until 8.30 a.m. this morning. Mike is tracking that. Mandera oh, correction. County. Mandera County. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he's tracking that this morning, and we're going to be checking in with him very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, August 30th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, heavy rain over in Bandera County. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Yeah, some of the areas, uh, just reading some of the, uh, the chat with the National Weather Service, uh, they've had ground measurements about five and a third inches of rain in parts of western Bandera County. Also, I just want to take note, I'm going to show you more on that in a moment, but parts of Del Rio, and there's a new flood advisory right around Del Rio, picked up nine tenths of an inch of rain in just 30 minutes. So it is definitely coming down in buckets. And first of all, you can see there is the flash flood warning for western Bandera County up until 830 this morning because of all the obviously very heavy rain that has fallen right around there and you can see let me zoom out just a little bit here and got in a little bit tight there let me come out to uh, to this view and uh, we do have once again, the heavy rain that has been falling there, rainfall rates, that's one of the things that uh, is really causing a problem and the fact that these storms are not moving 
pretty much at all, and they are training on top of that. So <clears throat> right here in portions of uh, western Bandera County, as you can see, some of these rainfall rates, it is coming down at about four, five, six inches per hour. Some of this uh, even seven inches per hour, those rainfall rates. Also in portions of uh, Real County, we're seeing some extremely heavy rainfall rates on top of that. And I wouldn't be surprised even if there is uh, some sort of a flash flood warning posted for parts of uh, Real County. Here's some of the rainfall rates being uh, detected by radar right there, about uh, close to six inches per hour there. And as far as the amount of rain that has fallen, at least radar estimates in these two spots, and this is where some of the heaviest has fallen right here. Again, in uh, western Bandera County, there are these uh, little bullseyes right in there and picked up by radar estimates right in that spot there about four inches of rain and just to the west of that uh, four and a half inches roughly. So it is definitely coming down in, like I said, in buckets around there. Flooding continues to be a threat and we've got this line of storms which will continue to work its way somewhat uh, down to the southeast, but it's not really uh, individual cells seem to be moving up to the north. Another spot we have to watch out for is right here in eastern Kinney County. A lot of very heavy rain there. This is going to continue on throughout the rest of the morning and into the afternoon. So we still have the flood advisory for parts of Edwards and Real County and that new flood advisory right there in Del Rio. That's until 830. This is until 715 and throughout the rest of today. By the way, mold fall elm both on the high side and we're going to be up 84 at noon. 90 90 high temperature, more showers and thunderstorms, primarily in the hill country, and we'll still see some scattered around the area, but hill country is the biggest concern. Again, flash flood warning for western Bandera County up until 8.30 this morning. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Hey, Mike. Well, I've been looking for updates there in Bandera County regarding the commute. Uh, thankfully, right now, nothing we're seeing just yet, but still, be careful out there. Here in town, roads are dry. I-10 at Hackberry. You can see there number wasn't really a lot there, but there are 35 at Maine. The commute is already getting going in here for this Tuesday morning. So just watch out. We know school buses are already back out on the roadways as well. So just remember to keep that in mind and give yourself plenty of time before you get out on the roads. Taking you to the map, there's really not been a lot to show you. We've been talking about active construction. We've been talking about gas prices and we'll continue to give you those updates as long as the commute stays quiet. Uh, if you are going to be traveling into San Antonio, these are here are your travel times right now from I-10 eastbound. That journey from Bernie is going to be about 24 minutes at this hour to 81 South heading in from Bolverde. No need to hurry there. 27 minutes at this hour and 35 heading in the southbound lanes from New Braunfels. We have 25 minutes. So again, for those commuters, just take your time this morning. No need to rush out the door. Traffic doesn't seem to be rushing here at 2 to Q81 at St. Mary's, but we are in that busy hour. We'll watch the roads closely. Make sure you do the same guys. Thanks, Stephen. New this morning, a drive by shooting on the west side sends one man to the hospital. It happened around 11 o'clock last night on San Luis, not far from South Hamilton. I'm sorry, uh, near Castroville Road. Uh, that's where police say a man in his 40s was walking when someone driving a dark colored sedan pulled up next to him and started firing. The man was hit in the arm and is expected to recover. At this time, no arrests have been made. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are trying to find a suspect responsible for stabbing two people on the river walk. This happened back on July 23rd, just after 5 a.m. Now, officers tell us that one of the victims got into a fight with the suspect in the 200 block of East Houston Street. After that fight, the victim and another person tried to walk away, but the suspect followed them and started another fight. That's when the two victims were stabbed. If you have any information, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number on your screen, 210-224-STOP. You could get a reward for the information you provide. First day of school quickly approaching for students at Uvalde CISD and the community had an open forum last night to discuss the district's budget and safety and security plans for the upcoming school year, which starts one week from today, Tuesday, September 6th. That open forum last night ran for 90 minutes. Speakers seemingly had a renewed sense of urgency about safety and security changes. At least one parent listed off security updates that could have potentially saved lives the day of the school shooting, May 24th. KSAT has also learned that special training will take place on Sunday and Monday to ensure law enforcement is prepared to start the school year next Tuesday. We'll have more on this coming up in the next half hour of GMSA. 
Well, some other big news we're following for you this morning. An 18 year old man is in jail after police say a picture of him posing with a gun in front of a Central Texas high school he used to attend was posted on social media. And this happened on Friday in Leander, Texas. That's just northwest of Austin. Now, officers there say the image showed the suspect, later identified as Joseph Ellis, in a car with a pistol in front of Rouse High School. Ellis was later arrested and now faces a terroristic threat charge. Leander police are reminding parents to tell their kids to report any suspicious activity on campus to school officials. And after widespread flooding on Sunday and Monday, people in Mississippi's capital of Jackson are poised to lose running water. And that's after the governor said at a press conference that a major pump at Jackson's main water treatment facility was damaged and the city has been using backup pumps. Until it's fixed, there will be no reliable running water in the city of Jackson, which will impact over 200,000 people. It also means the city won't be able to produce enough water for fighting fires and even flushing toilets. All Jackson Public Schools will shift to virtual learning today due to that water shortage. Right now, there is no timeline on when the main pump will be fixed. And here at home, San Antonio is being recognized on a national scale. The U.S. Secretary of Labor wants to replicate resources like the city's ready to work program across the country. The program helps pay for students tuition and connects them to financial aid programs. The goal is to get students into high demand jobs in industries like manufacturing, finance, construction and health care. The Labor Secretary got a first hand look at some of the training at St. Philip's College here in San Antonio. This program, there's no question, should be a model for the rest of the country, not could be. And we're told this program isn't without its challenges. About 5,400 people have applied, but only a few dozen have enrolled in a course or classes. The city says the gap is due to two things. Number one, not having enough staff. Number two, taking time to craft a career path for each applicant. Well, getting paid and making payments may soon become even faster. The Federal Reserve next year plans to launch a new electronic payment system called FedNow that could allow for near instant round the clock uh, transfers for things like paychecks or bill payments. The current system, which can sometimes take days for funds to be available, handled close to $73 trillion in transfers last year. And with more car makers looking for batteries to power electric powered vehicles, Honda and LG have struck a $4.4 billion deal to produce batteries. The plant will be built somewhere in North America and should be up and running by the end of 2025. Speaking of electric cars, after 40 years, there's finally a new model of the iconic sports car from the Back to the Future movies. The new DeLorean Alpha 5 looks nothing like the last model made before the company went out of business way back in 1982. The designer space, the new car on DeLorean's plans for a second model, DMC 24, which ne never actually got made. You may remember DeLorean announced plans for its global headquarters here in San Antonio back in February. And time now, 609 and 79 degrees for now. Much more to come on GMSA. Coming up a little later, the very latest on monkeypox here in Bear County. And are your kids getting enough playtime during the day? We're going to tell you why health experts say recess is crucial for their development. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. As Ukraine mounts a counteroffensive to retake Russian-held territory, concern is growing about the potential for disaster as troops fight in the footprint of Europe's largest nuclear power plant. That story coming up. Mike wants us to pass along as we go outside with live cam. New flash flood warning in effect for the city of Del Rio. You're watching GMSA. We'll be right back. Six thirteen, turning now to the war in Ukraine and fears of nuclear fallout. As Ukraine mounts a counteroffensive to win back Russian-occupied regions, a United Nations team of inspectors are setting out on a crucial mission. ABC's Justin Finch has the story. New Maxar satellite images showing a bird's eye view of some of the damage at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Now under Russian control, the site has been a flashpoint of fighting between Ukrainian and Russian forces, both blaming each other. The Pentagon asserting most of the shelling is coming from Russians. Watching from Washington, the White House is calling for a preemptive powering down of the site's nuclear reactors and for demilitarizing the area, calling that the safest and less risky option. A Ukrainian doctor telling ABC's Brett Clinton fears of another nuclear disaster are growing. We worked with some people who were exposed after the Chernobyl. They still have 
Ukraine's President Zelensky announcing a Russian counteroffensive in the south, saying the occupiers should know we will oust them to the border. As Ukraine fights for control of its country, new reports that President Putin is trying to ramp up the Russian military, aiming to add as many as 137,000 troops, eliminating the age limit to serve and even recruiting prisoners. Pentagon officials say Putin's effort is unlikely to succeed, noting Russia has lost between 60 and 80,000 soldiers in its war against Ukraine. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Time check, 6.15. Let's get a look at 37 North at Hackberry. You can see some flashing lights out there. Uh, that's a stalled vehicle that's been reported by TxDOT, and that's actually a TxDOT hero truck on the scene working to help that driver out. Commute already getting pretty busy. You have to be careful out there. Still very dark, and anytime we have crews out there on the roadway, we have to make sure we watch out for them because it looks a little too close for comfort there as vehicles are exiting there. But watch out in that direction. Again, 37 North at Hackberry. But taking you right to the map here, nothing else to show you. Thankfully, it has been a pretty quiet morning, at least here in town, but make sure to plan your commute ahead of time because there's still work taking place here off Loop 1604 on the northeast side of San Antonio. Those overhead structures that you see, well, we're going to see some work taking place there. That's began, that began on Monday, August 29th, and according to TxDOT, part of this work will wrap up on Wednesday, August 31st. That's tomorrow, but it will be overnight, so 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning, so plan your commute for those late night owls or early bird commuters. Alternating main lane closures from Palisades Drive to Pat Booker Road, but you know where that information is on our website, kset.com slash traffic. But right now, traffic here at 37 at Hackberry looks like it's picking up. Been dry here in town, but Maya can't say the same for other places. No, out in the hill country, a lot of heavy rain. The new flash flood warning in effect up until 830 for Valverde County, basically right in and around uh, Del Rio. And then we also have, and we'll get the uh, picture back up here in just a moment. And we also have the flash flood warning in effect for Western Bandera County also up until 830 this morning. And I just want to kind of put this in motion and show you how we're getting sort of this this training effect right here in and around Bandera County. These showers and the heavy downpours, not too much in the way of lightning strikes, but everything has just been sort of converging right there, dumping all of that rain right there in Bandera County. Um, there in Real County, also in Eastern Edwards County. A lot of very heavy rain has continued to fall. And then look what's been going on in Del Rio. They picked up about an inch and a third, almost close to an inch and a half of rain in just about 45 minutes right there in and around Del Rio. And this whole batch is going to continue to work its way off to the east. So uh, Kinney County, Webb County, right there along the Rio Grande, you want to watch it. Also, this area where we've had a lot of this uh, training. Now, they're not really, really heavy downpours, but that's that's uh, another, I think, area of concern as far as the uh, the rainfall rates. And that's one of the, the biggest things that we have been dealing with around here. It has been coming down just in buckets at times here in portions of Bandera County. We are looking at, by the way, just to the east of Vanderpool, there was a measurement of about five, almost five and a half inches of rain. That was an actual ground measurement. But some of the, the rainfall rates around here, first of all, obviously, there's the uh, flash flood warning. Let me go right there. And you can see that this is, uh, well, let me try this one more time here. And uh, rainfall rates about seven inches per hour. So again, it is coming down uh, very, very heavy. And the problem is these storms are not moving moving all that much and that's why we are getting the flooding issue even in portions of Real County we are looking at rainfall rates uh, anywhere about seven inches per hour that seems to be kind of the uh, the norm if you will and then further off to the west right there around Del Rio same situation we are looking at some rainfall rates coming down at the rate of about six to seven even higher than that inches per hour. Now, it doesn't mean you'll see that much, but obviously um, with these storms not moving very, very fast at all, that has definitely been the issue. All right, back to radar. 
and we are going to continue to see some of these showers and thunderstorms move on through portions of the hill country throughout the rest of the morning. Like I said, here in town, we're not really seeing much of anything as of right now, but we do have the chance for more showers and thunderstorms. Do have a uh, flood advisory. This is the only advisory left over. All the others have been upgraded into flash flood warnings. This is for eastern Edwards and uh, western portions of Real County, but I think right in that area there, uh, just to the east of Rock Springs and north of Lake you want to watch it for I would venture a guess that there may be some sort of a uh, flood warning posted for that. Just a, a guess on my part as of right now, but it's just been kind of sitting there raining all morning long. So temperatures in the uh, upper 70s, low 80s, the 40% chance of rain takes into account what's going on in the hill country right now. It's going to be dry for the morning hours for most of the metropolitan area for your commute. And then later on this afternoon, 90 for a high temperature and rain chances will definitely start to pick up around here, which is what computer models are indicating throughout the rest of today with uh, some of the afternoon heating once again, especially in parts of the hill country. So it is definitely going to be a wet situation out there and more potential flooding in portions of the hill country throughout the rest of the afternoon. 84 degrees today at noon, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Once again, high temperature up to 90 today, more scattered storms around the area. Heavy, heavy downpour is what we're going to have to watch out for, and that's the situation tomorrow and Thursday. Then we go on into the weekend. L somewhat lesser rain chances. I think we'll still have some scattered ones around. It won't rain constantly nor everywhere, but still that rain chance and low 90s all the way through Labor Day. So once again, until 830, flash flood warning, flood warning for right the Del Rio area and western Bandera counties. Seven inches per hour estimated. Yeah. And these and the thing is, these things aren't moving that much. So mm. you are seeing like in Del Rio, um, you know, it was almost an inch in a half an hour. So basically a two inch per hour, um, you know, actual rainfall that they're picking up. Yeah, I got a note from a viewer in Del Rio. It's like it's really pouring over here. I said, yep, believe it is. Yeah. I thank you, Mike. More to come as we continue to track the storms and see if the impact San Antonio later on. Right now, 621, 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, it could have been her farewell match, but Serena Williams is not ready to say goodbye just yet. We're going to have the highlights after the break. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin? Not me. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. Hide my skin? Not me. And for kids ages six months and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. With Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin? Not me. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. 625, Serena Williams not ready to say goodbye just yet. In her first match of what's expected to be the last U.S. Open and last tournament of her remarkable career, Williams overcame a shaky start to overpower Donka Kavinic, 6-3, 6-3. Many of her fans turned out in record numbers to fill Arthur Ashe Stadium. Williams was a 23-time Grand Slam champ who turns 41 next month. She has already said she is moving on from her playing days. She'll play again tomorrow in the second round of singles matches. Coming up later this morning on GMSA 9, UTSA offering a new grad program for aerospace engineering. We're going to visit their hypersonics lab to see what they're up to and how their branch of engineering is growing and how graduates can land really cool jobs in the future. Right now, 625, 79 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 630, President Joe Biden expected to address gun violence and public safety today after a string of high-profile crime news this week. We're going to explain. And we're bringing the latest on an overnight shooting on San Antonio's west side. One person is in the hospital, another still on the run. And a quick check of the roads with Trans Guy looking there at I-37 at Hackberry, where we see those flashing lights there close to the exit. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Gavasos very soon.
More than two inches of rain around Del Rio in just the past hour. We're seeing some rainfall rates of more than seven inches per hour in portions of the Hill Country. We've got some flash flood warnings to tell you about what to expect for the rest of the day. That's coming up. A West Side man may have been expecting a new home to be a real shot in the arm for his life, but chances are he never expected that to happen literally. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, San Antonio police looking for a shooter this morning. I'll tell you more about it. And good morning to you. It's Tuesday, August 30th. Thanks for joining us. I uh, hope you had a good Monday yesterday. That rain is really coming down in some areas. Let's get the very latest from Mike. Yeah, it has just been uh, these these heavy, heavy downpours just are not moving. They're kind of one right on top of the other. So this is what we are looking at as of right now. First of all, we do have the flash flood warning right around Del Rio up until 830 this morning. Like I was just saying, more than two inches of rain has fallen in just the past hour. And then also flash flood warning is in effect for Western Bandera County also up until two o'clock this morning. And the problem is, and let me put this in motion one more time, is the fact that especially the case here in Western Bandera County, all of these cells have just sort of been sitting still. Even some uh, measurements on the ground just to the east of Vanderpool, almost five and a half inches of rain has been picked up in roughly the past couple of hours. More heavy rain continues in parts of Real as well as Edwards County. And again, this whole line is almost sort of sitting still it looks like the individual cells want to be moving uh, working their way up to the north but then as the line comes down, basically the net effect is the fact that things are not moving all that much. And then here's the very heavy rain right down there around Del Rio. And that line extends down into northern Mexico and it is working its way to the east. So folks in portions of Kinney as well as uh, Webb counties, you're going to have to watch out for some of this heavy rain to move on in here. At least this has started to break up just a little bit. We were seeing some very hefty downpours here. More cells are developing, but right here on the four corners area between uh, Kinney, Uvalde, as well as Webb counties and Frio County, we're not seeing as, excuse me, Zavala County, we're not seeing quite uh, the heavy, heavy stuff kind of training in on top of uh, where rain has already fallen. Here in town, we haven't seen anything as far as any rain as of yet, but grab an umbrella and grab a rain jacket just to be on the safe side. Mold and Fall Elm are both on the high side and throughout the rest of today, we will continue to see more showers and thunderstorms. The focus is obviously this morning in the Hill Country. That's where the majority of rain is going to be falling today. We'll have uh, still scattered showers and storms all around the area. 84 at noon, 90 for a high temperature and more rain in the forecast to finish out the month of August and start September. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Hey, Mike, a uh, quick update. Just saw a message from our friends over in Bendera County the Sheriff's Office. They are reporting some water on the roadways near FM 470 and Seco Creek. They do also have text dot in routes. So if you are out there, make sure to drive carefully. We'll get that area pinpointed in just a little bit, but let's give you a quick look at what the commute is looking like here in the metro area. Gosh, US 90. The traffic is already picking up out there, so uh, you have to drive carefully this morning. It uh, doesn't really look like anything major is going to slow you down, but nonetheless, roads are dry. Just take it easy this morning. You can see here on the map, nothing major to show you in the metro area, just some quiet roadways, but we'll likely start to see those trouble spots pick up a little bit later on with the commute. So just again, Again, be careful out there. We did have a stall vehicle near 37 at Hackberry that is cleared out as we take you back to Transguide. It does look a lot busier out on our roadways, but again, we'll watch things closely and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. It seems that trouble has found a West Side man in his new address. He told San Antonio police he was headed to his new home when someone shot him. Happened last night on San Luis Street, not far from Zarzamora. Katrina Weber has a live report from downtown. Do police know why he was shot, Katrina? Well, that seems to be part of the mystery for police. Who shot him and why? The victim told them that he was new to the area, but someone treated him in a very unwelcome way. The police found that man in the 2200 block of San Luis Street with a gunshot wound in his arm. He told officers he was headed home around 11 last night when two people pulled up in a car and one of them shot him. He says he had just moved to that area. Now, the man who's in his 40s was treated at a hospital for that gunshot wound in his arm. Police are still looking for the shooter, someone who was in a dark colored sedan. Reporting live from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina.
A long night in Uvalde last night. The school board hosted a public hearing on the budget and tax rate and two special meetings. One of those was an open forum for families to discuss safety and security ahead of the starting of school next week. As Lee Waldman reports, the open forum lasted over an hour and a half. These open forum meetings have traditionally lasted a long time, but with the start of school just a week away, there was a renewed sense of urgency when it came to calls for safety and security changes. Ensuring campus personnel are aware of alternative methods of warning campus personnel of an active threat, including the use of intercom system. Real changes that could have potentially saved lives. This measure could have, been, could have saved <clears throat> Irma Garcia, Eva Mireles, Amy Jo Garza and Aletia Ramirez. That's what families of victims and community members are asking for as the start of school is around the corner. And with glass, I mean, were, were they going to, are they going to put some type of ballistic uh, film on, on all glass? Or is that true or not? That is one of the things we've we're investigating and looking at Dr. Hal Harrell going over the trainings that have taken place to get teachers and staff ready for the emotional needs of students this year. Also pointing out the physical changes to schools won't be ready in time. This work is running behind schedule. The uh, manufacturing of the doors and the frames is been back ordered. Calls were made again for every officer with UCISD police to be placed on leave for their roles on May 24th. The district reiterating an independent audit and evaluation is being conducted before an investigation is started. This not good enough for Monday night's attendees. Why not conduct an investigation as soon as possible so you can relieve some of these officers of their duty or faculty or other people that need to be removed from their duties that failed that day? I mean, don't you think that that would be important? Dr. Harrell mentioned that he'll be meeting with a DPS captain and lieutenant on Wednesday at 1030 a.m. to talk about what those 33 troopers will be doing on UCISD campuses come the start of school. We also learned that there will be trainings happening this coming Sunday and Monday to make sure that everyone is prepared and knows their roles for the start of school next Tuesday. And Uvalde, Lee Waldman for GMSA. The push for transparency in Uvalde and the investigation continues. We have more coverage posted for you on our website at ksat.com. And before we get to this next story, we want to let you know the details are disturbing. A 19-year-old man is in jail this morning, months after a 4-year-old girl told her family she was sexually assaulted. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says the child told a family member back in January that Juan Carlos Casillas had assaulted her. The sheriff says Casillas denied the assault when confronted, but family members say he eventually broke down and confessed. Salazar said Casillas is charged with super aggravated sexual assault of a child due to the victim's age. The sheriff also says Casillas might have had access to other children. Anyone with information about any other assaults, they are being asked to call the sheriff's office at number 210-335-6070. And you can read more about the story on our website at KSET.com. A former Bear County deputy now charged 46 year old David Amato is accused of tampering with a government record. The sheriff says an inmate told Amato he was attacked by other inmates. Investigators say Amato did not help the inmate and alleged that Amato lied on his daily report when he did not note the attack. The sheriff also says surveillance video apparently shows Amato may have witnessed or ordered part of the attack. The incident happened in February of last year. He was fired days later and is now more than a year later facing a state jail felony in this case. And right now, police are looking for a man believed to be connected to a series of burglaries. They say he broke into consignment shops in San Antonio, Olmos Park, Castle Hills, and Selma. Police say this man is seen wearing the same Nike Jordans in all the burglary videos. He also has a tattoo of Benjamin Franklin on his right forearm. Officers tell us the suspect targets high-end handbags. If you know who this man is, you're asked to call investigators. That number on your screen, 210-207-7629. And gun violence and public safety are in the limelight today. The White House says the president will address those issues while visiting Pennsylvania. President Joe Biden's Safer America plan includes an assault weapon ban. He is pushing it after a string of high-profile crime news this week. In Atlanta, officials say 26 alleged gang members have been arrested. They are charged with crimes targeting wealthy people, including some pro athletes and celebrities. In your GMA first look, a South Carolina judge in the Alex Murdaugh murder case has put strict controls on how defense lawyers can review evidence in the deaths of his wife and son. That story and more coming up at 7 o'clock right here on KSAT 12.
And more monkeypox cases popped up in Bear County. Metro Health confirming two more since Friday. That brings us to 27 total cases. We're also getting an update on COVID-19 testing. 639, 79 degrees. And still ahead, should recess be mandatory? After the break, we're going to show you how it could play an important role in your child's life. And welcome back at 643. So recess for many of us was our favorite part of the school day. And today the average recess is just about 27 minutes. And that's if kids get a recess at all. Georgia is the latest state to sign a law that makes recess a requirement at public elementary schools. Joins five other states that already require scheduled playtime during school hours. And seven other states require some sort of physical activity at the elementary school level. Experts say this trend will not only help a child's physical well-being, but their mental health as well. David Sears has a story. Basketball, jump rope, soccer. What do you remember most about recess? Playing tag, you know. I like playing with my friends. Studies show recess can contribute up to 70% of a child's weekday physical activity. But in recent years, our kids' free time has been getting cut short. Kids are not being kids in the classroom. Um, all we are expecting from them is to be a robot, to sit, copy, do what I'm asking you to do, and work all day long. First grade teacher Corrales Moreno sees firsthand how recess is necessary for our kids' education. We have been putting more pressure in our kids after, I would say, after COVID happened, since we have, like, so far behind. A study out of Harvard shows children need at least 60 minutes of exercise a day to help maintain a healthy body weight, strengthen bones, and manage healthy blood sugar levels. This not only helps physically, but can benefit a child's mental health as well. The CDC says physical activity in kids improves their ability to memorize, increases their attention span, and lowers the risk of depression. So what can you do when your kids are not in school? Some good ways to promote physical activity in your kids is to emphasize fun. When a kid finds something fun, they tend to stick with it longer. Also, plan ahead. Make sure your kids have a place and a time outside of school to play, and make sure to limit screen time. David Sears, KZ12 News. Exactly 645. Go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. You know, things are moving here in town. There's I-10 in Cincinnati. Really, just traffic's picking up, and that's all really that we're going to talk about here in the metro area. There's I-10 at Hackberry. Uh, again, you could just see a, a lot more folks out there getting the morning started, getting the day started, and thankfully, the commute here in town has been dry. But we take you into the map, and you can see that there is a lot of slowdowns already taking place there along US-90 at 1604 on the far west side of Bear County, as well as uh, over on the northwest side uh, near Holotus at 1604. These are the typical areas areas where we see those slowdowns, so that commute is pretty normal. However, we have been keeping a close eye on the Bandera County Sheriff's Office for any updates on perhaps water over the road. We mentioned this one a little bit earlier, FM 470 at Seco Creek. Uh, that is just one area that they have mentioned. They haven't listed any more locations, but still, regardless, they're heading out there to probably put up some road closure signs, so just make sure that you watch for that and give yourself plenty of time as if your commute, it takes you through Bandera County. But back here in town, Mike, the road, it's also looking pretty dry. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that, that's the nice thing that we've been seeing at the dry roads here in town. An update from Del Rio. Now they picked up the latest measurement about more than two and a third inches of rain in just over an hour, and that already breaks the uh, record rainfall total for today's date there in Del Rio, and obviously it is still raining. So we do still have the flash flood warning in effect right around Del Rio, and this is in effect up until 830 this morning, and that's the same situation right here in Central Bandera County or Western Bandera County, that flash flood warning, which is in effect up until 830 this morning. Now, one thing that uh, is looking kind of encouraging here in Bandera County, even though there's still a lot of very heavy rain, I'm going to put this back into motion for you that it looks as though where that heaviest rain was falling right there, that this may be sort of drifting off to the west a little bit, although there have been some uh, reports in and around Vanderpool, just to the east of Vanderpool of about uh, close to five and a half inches of rain so far this morning. But a lot of this almost seems like it's wanting to uh, converge or head in toward Real County, and there's a new flood advisory or an extended flood advisory for portions of Edwards as well as uh, Real County. A lot of rain continues 
in northern Kinney County. And then there again, we've got the Del Rio and all the way down into northern Mexico. And again, this is continuing to work its way off to the east. And so again, Kinney County, northern Webb County, you are in store for some of this very, very heavy rain. And again, this stuff is coming down as we were talking about in buckets around here. This has been the problem, the rainfall rates that have been reported. And you can see this whole area from Del Rio down in northern Mexico. Some of these rainfall rates are coming in at at about uh, we've seen reports already this morning about seven inches per hour, six and a half, six point seven inches per hour, six and then right there in parts of Del Rio, uh, five inches per hour as far as the rainfall rate is concerned. And uh, Steph said one of the viewers wrote in and said in Del Rio that it was just again coming down basically in buckets. And as far as the radar estimate on rain and a lot of this again has fallen well in Del Rio just about in the past hour or so. Some of these numbers coming in here right there in Del Rio. We've got about three inches radar or estimates and uh, down there in northern uh, northern Mexico about two and a half to three inches. And again, a lot of this has been just in the past hour. So that's why we are seeing some flooding around here. All right, to put this back into motion with radar. Like I said, this is going to continue to work its way off to the east and we still have some of these showers that are developing, although all sliding up to the northwestern Val or Uvalde County. Nothing further off to the east, but we are still going to have to be on the lookout for more rain, not only in just the hill country. That's going to be the focus of it, but also elsewhere throughout the rest of today. Here's another outlook for the flood advisory there until 830 for parts of Edwards and Real counties and then the flash flood warnings for Del Rio and central or western Bandera County up until 830 this morning. Temperatures are going to stay fairly steady this morning. We have the rain out to the west and that's going to be the situation throughout the day. There may be a bit of a lull in the action, say about noon, give or take, and then it's going to start to pick back up again. Roughly a 50% chance or greater than that out to the west for more showers and thunderstorms 90 for a high temperature today. So temperatures will definitely be held down and going in through this afternoon. This is where the heaviest rain once again is going to be where it doesn't need to fall anymore. It will start to taper off somewhat going into the evening hours once the sun goes down, but then it's going to refire tomorrow as well as on Thursday and we'll still keep some rain around throughout the next seven days. I mean, think back to a few weeks ago. We couldn't buy any rain and now obviously it's feast or famine and we're getting the feast 84 degrees scattered showers and thunderstorms at noon 90 high temperature today four degrees below normal. We're going to be staying basically right around 90 degrees all the way through the week in through the weekend. Best rain chances today, tomorrow, Thursday and then lesser rain chances in through the uh, weekend. But any of these storms problem has been the training one right on top of the other. They haven't been moving that much and any of these storms can produce some really hefty downpours. So that's what we're going to have to watch out for. And since we've already had some rain, ground, you know, isn't quite as dry as it is. Uh, speaking as it of was. Del Rio, Stephen just passed along to us. Uh, things are so bad in Del Rio. They're actually delaying the start of school uh, down there for two hours due to heavy rainfall. School start times of bus routes will be delayed by two hours. That's from the San Felipe Del Rio CISD. Stephen, thank you for passing thank that along. You. A lot of rain out there. 650, 79 degrees. And com coming up tomorrow on GMSA, could you be over parenting your child? We're going to show you some of the telltale signs. Outside with live cam, you'd never know how bad the rain is way to our west by looking at this shot towards San Antonio International Airport. Uh, we've got a heavy traffic out there right now. We'll get an update one more time from Stephen Cavazos coming up. Coming up later this morning on GMSA at 9, UTSA offering a new graduate program for aerospace engineering. We're going to visit their hypersonics lab to see what they're up to and how their branch of engineering is growing and how graduates can land really cool jobs in the future. Time check. It's about five till right now. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Stalls seem to have been the uh, issue of the morning here in town. Mark Steph, 410 at Ray Ellison. We see another one right there in the southbound lanes. Have to watch out. We do have a TxDOT Hero truck already on the scene, so hopefully this will wrap up before the commute really gets going. But we take you to the map and those slowdowns are already reflected right there along the usual 
usual spots. US 90, 410, 35. Look at that big slowdown out there. We do know that there is a lot of work that takes place, and also that's one of the heavily traveled corridors. Now, while we are seeing the usual slowdowns here in town, just a heads up for our friends in Bandera County, the sheriff's office there has issued water over the roads at FM 470 and Seco Creek. We are keeping a close eye to the commute the west of San Antonio, but Mike, what else can we expect? Uh, that's where the heaviest rain is and is going to be throughout the rest of the morning. The uh, flash flood warning for Bandera County is still till 830, but notice how some of that heavy rain appears to be getting its way out of the uh, the warning area, but it's still in effect. Same thing around Del Rio picked up uh, close to two and a half inches of rain in just over an hour have already surpassed the record rainfall for Del Rio for this day. And then that line of rain down into Mexico, which is working its way to the east, also flood advisories for parts of Edwards and uh, Real counties throughout uh, the rest of the morning commute up until 830. And uh, Mark had mentioned that Del Rio schools have delayed start for two hours because of some of the uh, heavy rain 90 for a high temperature today. We will continue to see more showers and thunderstorms, potentially heavy downpours today, tomorrow, as well as Thursday. Don't forget our free weather authority app. It'll come in handy today. Yes, be careful out there and we'll see you back here at nine.